Hello and let's talk about the elections to the Boxing Federation of India or rather the elections that were supposed to be held on December 18th but were postponed. Now these elections were originally supposed to be held on September but they were moved because of the COVID-19 pandemic and yet again they have been postponed after the state associations apparently wrote saying that due to the threat of COVID-19 and the fact that many of those who were supposed to vote at about the age of 60 it would be advisable to postpone the elections. Now, this has raised quite a bit of controversy with some sections protesting the move, of course. And this actually raises larger questions about democracy in Indian sport itself. Just a few weeks ago, we had seen the case of the All India Football Federation where associations had written demanding an early election. And there are a number of associations where such tussles continue, not only about elections, but about democracy within these sporting bodies itself. And this also has grave implications on the future of sport in the country, on the development of talent, on the preparation of players so, they can, so that they can compete at an international level. We talked to NewsClick's Leslie Xavier on some of these issues and the future of sport in India. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the controversy, the debate over elections to the All India Football Federation. At that point, state associations were writing saying that the elections should be held. And recently, we had the phenomenon of the Boxing Federation of India elections being postponed after state associations said they should not be held. And of course, the reason cited is COVID, so, uh, which, which is understandable at the same time, a bit strange at this point of time. So could you maybe take us through what exactly is happening in, with the BFI right now? Uh, the tourist brochures say that, I guess, that India is a country of glorious contrast or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, ha very heartening to see as a writer reader with a writer reader perspective that our sports administrators have gotten into this habit of writing letters but yeah for for what purpose that is that is where the shady business starts so in, in football like you mentioned uh, they have uh, the state associations and an overwhelming majority uh, almost 25 state associations wrote to the AF of all india football federation saying that they should take a decision on conducting the elections, uh, the date or whatever in the in the AGM that is coming up on on 21st of this month. Boxing is exactly the opposite, and uh, the, we don't know how many number of state associations are involved. But the current president of Boxing Federation of India, Ajay Srin, who is the owner of Spice Jet. He, he has, uh, in, their, in their communication, he has mentioned that uh, a majority of state associations have written to me asking that it is difficult for them to travel to whichever the place the elections are held because most of them are old people. The, I mean, and traveling under COVID-19 circumstances are difficult, so uh, they should postpone the elections to a date, a better date where things are settled as far as the pandemic is concerned. So the interesting bit here is that this uh, postponement of elections, uh, in, in, as far as boxing is concerned, there is a second faction that has come up, which is challenging the current president. And that is led by, uh, of course, we know that in the in Indian sport, politics intermingles with, I mean, politics is, uh, politicians are larger present at the administrative level than uh, former sports person. So in this case, the faction is led by Ashish uh, Shelar, BJP leader from Maharashtra, who is a former Maharashtra sports minister himself. And apparently the current secretary of Boxing Federation of India, Jay Kohli, is also supporting Shelar. And Ajay Singh, uh, it is evident from the way the state associations have responded. He has a uh, uh, backing from some most of the state associations as such and there there is a power struggle happening where the other faction wants the election to be held in the AGM which is on the 18th boxing's AGM was supposed to be staged on the 18th now Ajay Singh using these letters approached the returning officer Justice Rajesh Tandon and requested him to look at this matter and postpone it because uh, considering the circumstances and he has duly done that and the Indian Olympic Association as uh, also uh, agreed with the decision. So now we know how the power dynamics are. So IOA supports Ajay Singh, the incumbent uh, president, and the other faction, which possibly as the 
because see let's just be very clear ajay singh also is a is a friend of the bjp and uh, the other side has bjp politicians involved so now the tricky question is who has the larger cloud in the party dynamics for for things to things to fall in place in their favor uh, so ajay singh uh, was quoted in different interviews uh, that he is open to elections he wants the elections to happen and let the uh, associations or the representatives from the state decide what is perfect for the for, for boxing to take it uh, take indian boxing forward so to speak but the game here one can understand because we are talking about uh, elections in a country where general elections have been i mean in that sense uh, legislative assembly elections have been held recently bihar election and you know the amount of people that are involved in this uh, electoral processes now last week kerala local body elections happened again a huge I mean, multi stage elections as such and now we are talking about at the most a, a convention of 100 representatives which would be held in a highly sanitized secure environment like a five star hotel or whatever and they would all be traveling in 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 the safe confines of uh, airlines so maybe ajay singh himself can use his airline for that matter so uh, just just don't understand this idea that we are afraid of covid 19 let's not under, uh, conduct the elections at all because and again as far as indian sport administration is concerned athletics federation had its election last month uh, handball federation had its election elections last, last month and this month apparently few more federations uh, they are in in uh, they are supposed to conduct elections as well as agm so this process is happening and you can't just shut a democratic process within the sports community citing pandemic when on the other side all the other activities are being pushed for resumption and other activities that involve larger uh, larger crowd larger gathering larger logistical uh, processes uh, i'll i'll uh, talk about football because football the indian super league is being conducted in a eco bubble where a lot of players are involved 11 teams support staff everybody is involved no problem in conducting that but you can't get under people to conduct a, conduct a federation agm and election so that is the <laughs> dichotomy if you if you if you ask me and uh, just just don't understand this this logic at all and uh, uh, however this uh, i mean it, it's it's very clear sports administration or sports federations and sports associations are the least i mean the studies have proven that also university studies research papers are there are the least democratic uh, of all uh, institutions if you look at the last 20th and 21st century where democracy became the predominant way of uh, how things are run right so this context just wanted to uh, push up uh, what do you call uh, delve a bit further into the last point you mentioned which is in terms of democracy and in sports institutions so uh, of course globally we have heard a lot of these stories of influence peddling corruption and there are a lot of stories that come out Uh, during around the olympics for instance around that time but uh, how has india's record generally been in this because we do see that there is a general tendency for of course it's understandable some ways but for sports administrators to try to stay on in power as long as possible there isn't there seems to be no real uh, or is there a real process which uniformly regulates all these associations in terms of how their democratic functioning should be uh, uh, this uh... elections if you look at it i mean in in the indian context uh, there have always been infighting within the federations within the associations and uh, if you uh, i mean a uh, couple of weeks back in fact in the last two three discussions we have we have brought out this point that uh, earlier because of a pil from the uh, from a sports lawyer rahul mehra in uh, in the delhi high court uh, delhi high court had directed the sports ministry to take the recognition away of 50 Uh, six uh, national sports federations because they don't comply with the national sports code now when the national sports code was instituted uh, uh, it was uh, with the uh, aim that uh, administrative the structure can be uh, all the corruption and all the politics that happen within that system can be 
and we negate it as much as possible. So uh, it stipulates among among many things tenure for the people at the helm. So they can't they can't sit as president for more than three terms, which is 12 years max. And uh, there is a cooling off period after that. There is an age gap. There is uh, I mean so a lot of rules and it's it's largely a political if you uh, I mean on the outside, but the but the point is that none none of the federations have implemented or incorporated those directives into the into their constitution. So this is uh, almost ten years now since the national sports code was was uh, pushed forth towards these federations, but none uh, I mean very few I mean handful of them have I mean accepted some some parts of it, not not even fully that way. And while most of them are are not keen keen to implement at all, and it all. Uh, I mean, it all it all shows about the people at the helm and how they want to catch uh, catch hold of the chair and remain in that chair. And uh, uh, if you look at boxing federation, for instance, uh, after two thousand thirteen fourteen, there was a huge power struggle within the federation, and uh, Indian boxing federation had lost its uh, uh, recognition with the with the global body. ABA is the glo global body. And then once the elections happened and uh, things were ironed out here, then recognition came back again. And that critical period, if you look at, if you correlate it with the performance of our boxers at the international arena, it dipped because we are talking about uh, Indian boxers getting medals at the Olympics. First Vijay Singh in 2008 and 2012 Maricom followed that up with a medal. Plus many of them being there or thereabouts in the medal bracket and world championship, of course, they were winning medals. And then suddenly, once uh, corresponding to, uh, uh, I mean, in in correlation with the happenings at the federation and the fights happening at the federation, the performance tip, the next Olympic Games in Brazil, we had zero medals and most of, the, of our boxers uh, failed to go progress beyond the initial rounds. So. So that is the impact that is there directly. If you look at uh, the problems that happens within the uh, the politics that happen within the federation, because once the global body, regardless of whatever the alignment is, once the global body realizes that there is a problem within the national federation, they would take away that recognition so that the uh, things are things are end out here. So if you look at, I mean, archery federation doesn't have a recognition with the global body. The karate federation. It has a huge problem. There are like, I think, three factions which are which are fighting for power. And uh, of course, the current ruling in this game of power and chairs and chess or whatever it can be called, called the Indian Olympic Association is also a player because it's not directly between the global federation and the national fed, uh, federation of a particular sport. But there is this. The representatives of this national federation has a stake in Indian Olympic Association elections as well. So that, that it's it's actually a cesspool uh, uh, where political leanings and uh, power dynamics and electoral ideas and all everything comes into play. And globally, I mean, uh, though everybody claims that we iron out stuff, we keep everything. But if you look at the global body of many sport, there have been officials who have been at the helm and controlling things with the iron fist without without leaving the chair many of them and uh, uh, so indian Olymp I mean, international olympic committee tries to uh, intervene it's not like ioc itself is is clean but they try to intervene and get things in order so globally if you look at global body elections there have been few elections that have happened in in uh, for instance uh, in rugby union elections happened and uh, interestingly, some of the national Olympic associations, they wanted to conduct elections. Some was uh, agreed by the international committee. Uh, others were asked not to do elections. And the means of elections was online. So South African Association, for instance, was asked to not to conduct elections because the IOC feels that South Africa is so corrupt that the elections won't be uh, in, a, in an unbiased way. So these are the, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you, you probably can understand the depth of mess in it by the way I am having trouble articulating because I am <laughs> jumping from one point to the other. So it's, 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 it's a, it's a pretty murky situation as far as these power dynamics and politics in international sport. 
all the nationals vote is concerned okay. it's very clear though uh, at the nationals at, at our national federation level when things happen bad it directly affects the players okay. right till the uh, grassroots absolutely and that uh, the grassroots points is also very key because i guess when infighting peaks when there is no certainty about administration there is no real attention paid to grassroots development programs uh, no systematic attempt that is made over the years to build up talent which can actually peak in events like the olympics or the asian games or the commonwealth games yeah it's uh, so uh, what happens is when when these alignments happen and when this lack of elections for instance and so that trickles down to to the to the governing bodies at the district level or or the sub district level uh, the basic unit from where representatives come to the state then state representatives come to the national so it's 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 a cascading effect and uh, last discussion itself a uh, uh, couple of discussions back i had spoken about how high suffered while while being a wrestler and caught in the crossfire between two warring factions in the state association in kerala so the same similar thing is happening there though uh, and it's it's directly linked to the national sports code so this is uh, i mean this is i am part of a whatsapp group of former wrestlers in kerala and officials and coaches so there is a power struggle happening there where the incumbent president who is also the secretary general of the wrestling federation of india vn prasu this is his name so he he will complete 12 years so as per national sports code he has to step down as the president of kerala state association but i i am of the understanding that he is not very keen so last time a cooling off period was required I, if i remember it right he had got uh, gotten one of his represent uh, one of his relatives to become the secretary of of the kerala association so that's how these things work in kabaddi federation uh, which is again in a mess now and that again uh, i'll tell you asian games 2018 we lost we didn't one win gold in both the men's and women's segment and it coincided with the power struggle in the in the kabaddi federation so uh, it's uh, so initiating programs at the grassroots or initiating programs for players and uh, so all these things have, uh, can only happen if if the structure is in place without any uh, power struggle happening within the system so if if for instance a state association and this is a reality of course uh, i am i am stating it uh, without presenting proofs of the situation but i have experienced it myself at the personal level so if a state association is ruled by a faction which didn't vote for the ruling faction in the national federation then yeah god help god help them because uh, uh, things will always be biased that way so uh, that's that's just a simple example so holding the elections is very key to this yeah of course uh, adhering to the national sports code is important and that's what rahul mehra again has filed a pil last week saying that uh, the stay, the court should hold i um, mean stay whatever the elections that is going to be held in the next uh, few months till these federations who are taking the elections who are conducting the elections have a constitution which follows the national sports code but that would create a huge mess which uh, mera whatever the goodness in his intentions he doesn't realize that it it drastically affects the players as well so holding the elections democracy is i mean the the practice of democracy at least whatever the semblance of democracy that is there in indian sport is is paramount of course the new federation the court can direct them to implement the Uh, sports code uh, at a later stage, but uh, getting an elected um, elected body in place is important for running of the sport in the country, as well as to maintain that bridge with the international federation. Because if if a body is run by an ad hoc committee, then that recognition goes. Then right. the uh, then it then it 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 creates um, trouble on two prongs. Absolutely. So. what is the solution to this uh, frankly it's it's very difficult to understand how how to go about it but but the simple step would be to i mean see democracy at play within these federations that's that's that, that's all we can hope for absolutely even if it's a very messy democracy thank you so much leslie for talking to us that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from india and the world until then keep watching news click Thank <laughs> you.